Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel and a very, very happy new year to you all. This is my first video of 2022 and well, it's ample really because the sun is shining and I'm feeling really, really excited about the year ahead. Now, before I do get into the topic of today's video, I must just reflect and say a big thank you to all of your incredible support on my last video uh, on the channel, which was last year. I did a Q&A in which I touched on some mental health issues I've been experiencing and well, the response to that video was just far, far exceeded what I could have imagined and um, it just really illustrates the incredible community that we have here on this channel on YouTube. So thank you very, very much. So I thought I'd kick off the year with probably my least featured car of the end of last year, my Porsche Boxster S, which is funny really because it's the car that I look at the most and wish I was driving the most because let's be honest, this silver paintwork with the blue roof and blue interior is just absolutely stunning. When the sun came out this morning, I thought, today is probably the best possible day to do a little video on it and to talk about something well I've really wanted to talk about since owning it the sort of reason why unfortunately it's not the most enjoyable car to drive or to own in this country through no fault of the car itself in a very short moment then I'm gonna jump in the car but whilst I'm out here freezing my butt off filming this intro for you guys my hair's blowing all over the place it's probably a good time to mention that when I'm not freezing my butt off, I'm normally at home sitting at my desk in the office, nice and warm, editing videos, planning content, and things like that. Which brings me on to today's video sponsor, FlexiSpot. So just quickly, let me show you a little bit about them. Now I'd like to say a quick thank you to today's video sponsor, which is FlexiSpot. Most of the time, or in fact, pretty much all of the time, my videos involve me driving around in cars, being out and about. But what you don't really see is that behind the scenes, most of the work that goes into my YouTube channel is from home. FlexiSpot is the top standing desk brand in the UK and they very kindly sent me one of these beautiful mahogany desks just ahead of Christmas so I could get some time to use it and see how it was. Now I wouldn't normally say yes to a desk, however this one is electronic which means it's height adjustable from the push of a button. As we all know spending lots and lots of time sitting in the same chair, especially the one I've got which is not great at the moment, it can't be great for your back. So the ability here to raise the desk into a standing position which actually I've really enjoyed doing is fantastic. I find it much easier to work for longer periods of time when I have the ability to adjust my position of seating but using the desk height so I can stand up or I can sit down or whatever I feel like doing but actually like I say I found that standing up is a really really nice way to work. So of course this wouldn't be an integration without some sort of incentive for you guys. FlexiSpot do in fact have a Christmas sale still up and running up to 35% off until the 10th of January so you better move quickly. Big thank you to FlexiSpot then for sponsoring this video and let's quickly get back in to today's topic. So thank you FlexiSpot. Without any further ado, let's jump in the Porsche now. I think, get the roof off. And if I'm being totally honest, I've probably driven this car with the roof off in the four months or so that I've owned it twice. We've not had the weather for it. Uh, but today, although it's cold, let's get in, have the roof off and take it out for a spin. So, back in the Porsche for the first time in a while. It's sad that this car doesn't really get used all that much. And there's a real reason for that. And the reason is that I own a Range Rover. That car seems to just do everything. No, it's not a sports car and you can't throw it around on, on roads like this, hence where I am today. But apart from that, you can get in it. You can just heat it up chuck it in the auto, chuck it in drive, drive it, go anywhere in it, and it's comfortable and all the rest of it. So a lot of the time, the Range Rover is, is the answer to more or less anything. And so you find yourself driving that, which means this does get left to one side fairly regularly. The Range Rover, however, mm -hmm. 
doesn't rev all the way up to 7,000 RPM or have that fizz of this flat six Porsche engine, not in the slightest. And this gives you a sensation unlike any of the other cars that I have. And I've said in previous videos, and it is still true even now, and maybe it's because I don't drive it so much, but there's something about being in a Porsche, and it's the first Porsche I've ever owned, that just makes you feel a little bit special. You do feel like you're in a special place. And to think that this was 4,000 pounds, or actually 3,800 to be specific, I can't really think of what other cars you can buy around that sort of price point that give the same sort of effect and, and notion of, you know, being in a special car. That second gear just seems to go on forever. So then, why have I titled this video how I've titled it? Because it's a very cynical sort of outlook. It is true, really, unfortunately, that we have a big problem in this country, which is, and you might be able to tell from awful sound quality and shaky cameras, what I'm about to say, it's, it's road quality. Now, this car is so point and shoot, so lightweight feeling and nimble, and really therefore responds to the road and everything the road is doing, which from a driver's perspective is fantastic because you do really feel everything that's going on with the car underneath me. I mean, I'm on a fairly straight road now, but we're wiggling around all over the place. But the problem is our road surfaces are just shocking. And this car is set up in such a firm way that it can be quite uncomfortable and take away some of the fun when driving. I was thinking back this morning to the road trip I did to Germany in my BMW Z4. And just remembering as soon as you get into France on the auto route, and then when you travel through Belgium and into Germany and everywhere around there, the roads are just fabulous. They're smooth, they're wide, and they're pretty flat. They're very consistent. There's none of that going on, really. And there's no potholes everywhere, and there's no bumps. And it feels like you're driving a different car. And I can only imagine that this Boxster S will be even more accustomed to, to noticing that difference than the Z4 was. And so this morning I woke up absolutely longing to take this thing over to Germany or even just onto the continent just to experience what it's like on some smooth, maybe even mountain roads. And that is something that I want to plan for this year with this car because, well, as you may have seen, I took this car to ePorsche, had it inspected and serviced and we went through all of that. And I'm going to go back, not to ePorsche, but to LaRose Porsche, also uh, in the same sort of group, to have the suspension refresh done. So after that, it'll be driving even sweeter and I'll be really, really keen to take it down to the continent, whether it is Germany in the Nürburgring or somewhere else, um, COVID depending, I suppose, and just experience it for sort of how it was designed to be, I think. You know, this is such a planted, precise car and I can only imagine that on a smooth road, it will be really, really rewarding to drive. And that's not to say it's not rewarding to drive today on these roads, because it is, but you just feel yourself bumping around and it takes away a little bit of the enjoyment. The other thing I'd say about this car and one way in which it suffers, which is down to the car, but this is to be expected. And I think especially my opinion is skewed when I own three other sort of automatic cruisers is that the manual gearbox in this is, is fantastic, don't get me wrong. It's very, very precise and it feels great to use when you're thrashing it. So when you're in traffic and a lot of the driving I do unfortunately isn't like this, it is going to the shops and picking up litter for my little kitten and things like that. Now in traffic and just around town, this is not a particularly enjoyable car to drive. It's very, very tight in here. It's very rattly, as you can see. 
and um, it feels very small on the road. So when you're on a road like this, and I've got a beautiful bit of road ahead of me, which we're going to enjoy in a second, it's perfect. It's, it's brilliant and it's extremely fun to drive. However, sort of for your day to day use and you're throwing it around town and gear changing, holding it on the clutch in traffic, it's not that great. So. I think the perfect place to own one of these cars would be in somewhere like Austria where you've got smooth mountain roads either side, whether you go left or right out of your driveway. But what we can do right now is enjoy this road, which although bumpy, is stunning. And the pickup on this car, I forgot how instantaneous that throttle response was. And just the way this thing handles, I can't describe to you how precise and sensitive it is and how well you are aware of what's going on underneath you is brilliant. My hat almost blew off there because we are picking up some pace and this thing does pick up pace so so well. So so well and as mentioned and as everyone will tell you these engines just reward you for going through the gears which is great because that's the most fun thing you can possibly do. So a little rev match into second there as we slow down. And yeah, there you go. When you're when you're really stamping on it, it's really rewarding and fun to use. So let's just do let's just floor it here. Actually, let's not dump the clutch, but go into first here. And 10 miles an hour, we're just going to go. Traction kicking in there. It's very cold and wet this morning. And there's a cyclist. So I'm going to heel and toe unnecessarily into second and go past him there. Let him know what he's missing out on whilst he's pushing those pedals. He should be in one of these six cylinder masterpieces. And I have to say, you know, despite my complaints and the topic of this video being, oh, you know, the roads are a bit bad, so you shouldn't buy a Porsche. That's not really what I'm saying. What a way this is to kick off the year in the sun, in the Porsche, with the roof down and a heavy right foot. Happy days. So I will say for every reason not to own one of these cars, there's probably at least three reasons that you should. So all in all, if you have the opportunity to buy a Boxster S, certainly, uh, and especially at a good price like I did, one that's quite well sorted, you absolutely should. This should not put you off at all. And as we seemingly discovered in my upload where we took this to ePorsche to have sort of an inspection service, these aren't frighteningly expensive to run. You can run them very cheaply. It even returns about 27 miles per gallon on fuel, which actually is a low number, but compared to what else I drive on a daily basis, it seems pretty good to me. But the major service on this costs less than 400 pounds at a specialist, which was surprisingly good. But for example, my BMW Z4 didn't have that sort of throttle response and it did not have this handling at all. This is the best handling car I've ever owned for sure. And in response to people that will tell you, oh, you know, the box is just a poor man's 911. Well, firstly, I guarantee you most of those people haven't driven one of these cars, but what Mike Brewer said is that, well, yeah, it sort of is because it's a lot cheaper. However, it's 90% of a 911 in terms of components, but only 60% of the cost. And what this has, which the 911 does not, is a mid-engined platform, which improves the handling and arguably actually handles better than its older brother, the 911. I seem to have found myself though in traffic. I've got a lorry behind me and a pickup truck in front. And I do feel sort of ridiculous sitting here in my little two-seater convertible, I have to say. So I wanna go around this roundabout and try and find my way back to those nice roads. Let's see if I can do that. I have to say as well, although historically I may have felt different before owning, you know, several cars, 
I don't feel guilty about not driving this car. One, because it is an occasion when you drive it, it's special and so, you know, the more you do drive it, the more it will dumb down that feeling. But secondly, well, it's from 2003, which is almost 20 years old, but this car was introduced in, I think it was 98, so it's over 20 years old as a platform. And classic might be pushing it, but it does feel vintage in here from the switch gear to the big analog rev counter and the steering wheel with absolutely nothing on it, just it's a three spoke for your hands. It does feel very analog, yes, but I would say borderline classic. And so it feels like something that you should sort of keep in a garage and nurture and take it for its annual service regardless and look after it and polish it and clean it and keep it looking beautiful. Let's go left, this looks like a back road. And so when you do drive it, it feels like you've got to nurture it up to temperature and slowly run through the gears. And then eventually when it's all warmed up, you just make sure it's all still there. And as a petrol head and someone that just loves to drive, if you can do so, have one of these in the garage. If you're on a budget, have one of these. If you've got to have a two seater, have one of these. If you don't want to spend crazy amounts of money have one of these because it does make you feel like a million dollars. What a horrible phrase, but it does, it really does. And I don't think you'd even need to go for the S. Okay, I haven't driven the others, but for me, it's not the power that I enjoy the most about this car. It's just everything else around it, the handling, the way it makes you feel, the way it looks. And you certainly don't need an S for any of that. But in order to summarise this video then, of course, it's not actually been a slate of the Boxster at all. This is a fantastic car, which I hope to keep for a little while longer, certainly take onto the continent so we can enjoy some properly smooth roads. But to summarise, I will just beg the government to stop making excuses for our silly roads. I don't care, make them toll roads. I mean, having said that, don't we pay enough for road tax and everything else anyway. But anyway, please do create some smooth roads for us pencil heads. Stop investing money into smart motorways, which kill people, and stupid average speed checks, variable speed limits. They're useless and we hate them. What we want is some smooth roads so that we can enjoy our fine motor vehicles. So, with that guys, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this sort of, where are we by the way? I have no idea, but this is gorgeous. We've got like some castle in front of us. Let's go right. This is great. Just exploring around in my Boxer in somewhere I've never been, a car I haven't driven for weeks and I'm just sort of getting used to this new area, but also getting used to this, what feels like a new car because it's so alien to me having a manual. But as I was saying, I hope you've enjoyed and hang on. Ooh. Hope you've enjoyed this sort of reintroduction to the Boxster. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed coming along on the ride with me. I do, uh, I do also hope that you guys had a great uh, holiday if you celebrate it and had some time off. And also are feeling optimistic for the new year as I am. So many thanks for watching guys. Do stay tuned if you're here for the Boxster content because as I said, we've got it going into La Rose Porsche next month for some suspension work. Well, I say some, basically a complete suspension refresh, about £3,000 worth of work, I think. And it does actually have an MOT coming up in a few weeks. So hopefully it will pass uneventfully and I won't need to speak of it. But of course, if anything does go untoward with that, I'll be sure to film it and let you know. So yes, if you're here for Boxer content, do stay tuned for those things and after they're out of the way we can start planning a trip to Europe I think in this thing. Otherwise, exciting announcement coming on the channel RE the 7 series next up and the Range Rover well you'll have to see what we've got in store for that. Oh yeah and I also have that Mercedes which is rotting somewhere but video on that soon too. Thanks everyone for watching and I'll see you all very, very soon. 